for next two minutes, 10 minutes, I suggest come back to the earth. To the earth where we live, this is our planet, and to what we know about the surface of the earth, about their interior. So how deep we can know structure of the earth? Of course, we can collect samples of rocks in valleys in the mountains. We can collect samples in deep mines, in deep geological boreholes. But how much it is? Sorry. This is only, this is only as small as this small dot. Because the deepest borehole, geological borehole in the world, this is only 12 kilometers deep. When we combine this to the radius of the Earth, which is 6,371 kilometers, it is very small. So the problem is how to investigate really deep interior. The topic of this conference is act from within, act from within outside. And I will go exactly in opposite direction. I will go down towards to the Earth's interior. To study Earth's interior, we will use seismic waves, seismic waves which are generated by very strong earthquakes. Seismic waves are the same as normal, we know, elastic waves. The name seismic is from Greek. Seismos, it means quake, it means uh, quake. So waves generated by earthquakes, we will call seismic waves. And using seismic waves, we will be able to build model of the Earth. Model which has crust, mantle, and core. This model will be a reference model for seismic tomography. Seismic tomography which is similar to tomography in medicine. And this technique permits us to find anomalies, positive, negative anomalies. And from that, we will be able to determine layers in the Earth. Strong lithosphere, again from Greek, lithos means strong and weak asthenosphere. Again, from Greek, asthenos, it means weak. Let's start from earthquakes and seismic waves. Nearly each month we hear about strong earthquakes. This is a cover of Japanese uh, journal which show destruction of the uh, town Kobe in 1995. Another strong earthquakes were in San Francisco, 1906, Tanshan in China, 1976, Izmit, Turkey, Haiti, Nepal three years ago. So as we see, these earthquakes occur in the whole world. But the question is, are they distributed regularly or randomly? Let's look to the map of Earth seismicity. This is a map in which each single dot shows one epicenter of one earthquake. So for a few years, we record more than about 30,000 of earthquakes. And when we look to the epicenters, we see that this distribution is not random. They are concentrated in some bands. The biggest number of earthquakes the strongest earthquake are around Pacific. Another band is starting from Southeastern Asia through Himalaya to Mediterranean Sea. Also in the oceans, we see narrow bands of seismics. How we can interpret this picture? We interpret this in this way, that surface of the earth is built from plates, from lithospheric plates, and when we look to the inside of plates, there are almost no earthquakes. Earthquakes are just on the edges of plates. Moving plates generate 
earthquakes. How we record these earthquakes? Strong earthquakes are recorded through the whole of the Earth. This is an example of our array in northern Poland, which recorded Alaska earthquake. Basically, we record three kinds of, wa of waves. Longitudinal, P waves, with this movement, S waves, shear waves, and surface waves. Using seismograms, we can measure time from the earthquake to the station. So basically, from the time of observation and amplitudes of these waves, we can build a model of the Earth's interior. It's funny, but using only 20 earthquakes, we can build such a pictures. 12, 20 earthquakes ordered with distance, zero it means we are in the earthquake, 180 degree, it is just in the opposite side of the Earth, and we record very beautiful surface waves, which are the strongest, but also S waves and P waves. Interesting phenomenon is that in the distance around 100 degree, there is some kind of shadow zone. These waves are not continue to the far distances. It means that in the Earth must be something which block these waves. So how to go to seismic model from seismic records? When we have earthquake, the rays penetrate mantle, go for farther and farther, deeper, up to distance 100 degree. And the next ray is refracted, so inside the earth must be something which change the rays uh, in this depth. This something is earth interior, earth core. So in this model, we have mantle, which is built from rocks, at the depth 2,900 kilometers, we have border, the most dramatic border in the Earth because this is a border between rocky mantle and iron and nickel, in general, metallic core. The outer core is liquid because S waves not transmit through. So this is, in general, model of the Earth. And out, uh, inner core, is very small. Inner core, which is a solid, takes about 1% of the total volume of the Earth only. Totally, with outer core, the metallic core has about 16% of volume. Other part, this is a mantle built from rocks, mainly from silicates. What we can do, as I said, with seismic tomography? Seismic tomography is similar to tomography in medicine. In medicine, we have a tomograph, and there are sources of radiation, there are receivers of radiation, and we record this radiation, and on the base of this observation, we build three-dimensional model dedicated basically to human body. We can put our head to the a tomograph and check if we have something or, or not. In the seismology sit situation is similar, however, as a sources, we use, use earthquakes. We have many, many thousands of earthquakes which are recorded by many thousands of seismic stations. And from this, we build three-dimensional model of positive and negative anomalies comparing to the previous shown model. So these anomalies could be illustrated imagine, imagine using seismic tomography. And here is a cross-section from Pacific through Southern America, Atlantic, Northern, uh, Southern Africa, Madagascar, and Indian Ocean. And the cross-section, this is a surface, this is a border with core, this picture shows seismic velocity anomalies. Positive anomalies, plus one and a half percent, and negative anomalies. We interpret that higher velocity are related to cold 
areas of the mantle, while lower velocity are related to uh, hot uh, areas. So, beneath continents, we have plenty of blue. It means that continents are thick and are also cold. Opposite to oceans, Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian oceans. They are red, so it means that they are hot. In area of our array in northern Poland, we can build model for the deep interior for this area using mostly surface waves. And situation looks good. When we look to the lithosphere, the lithosphere beneath northern Poland, basically between, beneath uh, East Europe and Creighton, is very thick, more than 200 kilometers. That means that that place is very stable. And fortunately, in Poland, we have no earthquakes. To summarize, seismic waves generated in strong earthquakes penetrate deep Earth's interior and permit to build global model with solid rocky crust and mantle and metallic core. Outer core is liquid and inner core is solid. Seismic tomography shows us a few percent anomalies of seismic waves which can be interpreted as a cold and warm areas. This is particularly important in the study of Earth's convection and geodynamic processes, movement of place, continental drift, and of course, earthquakes. But this is for another story. Thank you very much.